Welcome to another episode of Treasure Corals and in today's video you are going to explore a bubble tip anemone and move it from one aquarium onto another. Then we are going to talk about the flow and a few issues in my big frag system. I've listened to a lot of your comments and I'm doing everything I can to optimize the flow. Uh, there's a few solutions and I think I've uh, probably nailed it. Uh, let me know what you think about that one. And finally, um, I have a new aquarium. So uh, stay tuned towards the end of the video and there's going to be a big unveilment as well as um, you will get to see uh, where it's going to go. So let's dive right in. thought I would show what a recently split anemone looks like. So this morning I have noticed that this anemone island that I have in my right corner of the aquarium, one of the anemones has moved over to the glass. I think it's having a little bit of trouble focusing. No, here we are. So this particular island has probably four or five anemones. I have to be careful because once in a while they start wander and going around the tank. But this one was very nice. It was just stuck on this glass. And I have just used my uh, index finger to carefully caress it and move it off the glass. And now this anemone is ready to find a new home. So this little guy is huge. Look at that. This is a, what a one liter jug. This is probably six inches in diameter at least. And this is a beautiful, beautiful anemone. It's gonna go into the frag system. I have another anemone over here. It's a little bit smaller. And I think I have a couple of shrimp, peppermint shrimp that just like to live in this area. So all we have to do is, is that my water is very similar, same salinity, everything is the same. I'm just gonna get the sky and I'm gonna pour it over here. Look at that. I think it's gonna right itself shortly and I hope it's not gonna go after any of the shrimp which probably I should have thought before so oh, I'm gonna actually use my uh, tongs to turn it around buddy just move it around get into that corner maybe Gently, gently, gently. No, I think I'll have to use the glove to turn it around. So one thing you probably never want to do is flip the anemone with your fingers because you're gonna get stung, at least I know I would. So I'm using the gloves and I'm gently moving it around. So here we go. So the anemone is, I'm sure, going to get stuck. Look how much bigger this anemone is compared to the other one. Let's take another look. Yeah. That's pretty gorgeous. All right. I'm gonna leave it, leave it be. I think the shrimp are going to be okay. You can always get out if they wanted to, but they don't seem to be bothered. And yeah, this is one nice looking anemone. Let's uh, check in on both of my quarantine tanks. So I've taken the uh, rasses out of the aquariums. So now the one on the left only has the uh, bristle nose. Oh, sorry, bristle tooth that I think I'm going to be introducing into the main tank fairly quickly. 
um, let me know what you think if he uh, I'm risking it I'm not thinking of acclimating it in a box for a couple of days because I don't think anybody is gonna harass this guy but I don't know um, maybe I will so you can see he's over there but he's actually a lot less shy now and when I feed uh, some food he does come out so he's actually eating quite regularly so you can see him pecking already so awesome guy not sure uh, if I'm gonna risk it but I'm still wondering because you know he's definitely a beautiful fish and same is going on with this uh, aquarium so both the bristle nose uh, bristle tooth keep calling it bristle nose for some reason uh, I guess this is my freshwater background with um, the bristle nose plecos so bristle tooth um, white tail is always hiding but he does eat and I have the white um, sorry the clown tank over there as well they are both doing quite quite nice and the clown tank is very active he's swimming around so those two guys I have special plans for so that's the plan so far so next topic I want to discuss is the flow in my frag aquarium so as I have mentioned in my previous video I have three frag tanks linked together and I have uh, noticed that I was getting a little bit of issues with some of my corals so you can see there's some peeling on this first sunset monte although the rest of them seem to be doing quite well and I haven't lost anything after that there is one more bleached uh, monte right over there but that's actually green slimer touching it so I want I'm actually rethinking um, my arrangement of corals here to maximize the flow so this tank is six feet by three feet and it's I think 16 inches high um, and I have four mp40s that are located on the other side of the aquarium so all the flow is lateral and up to um, like in my last video actually I had those four mp40s located right over here so they were actually all the way at the bottom and I was using something called the detritus free method um, I've seen it at reef wholesale I've seen it a few other places where you basically have the flow coming from the bottom it comes up here and then circles now even when I was running my pumps at a hundred percent um, one thing I did notice when I was doing this is that right in this area here I was getting uh, a film on the surface of the aquarium which right now I do not get any so no matter how strong the flow was there was just like a dead spot of some sort so what I'm doing now is um, well I have watched quite a few videos and I've looked at um, uh, worldwide corals which is supposed to be the gold staple out there and they um, all run the flow the other way around and even with the reef wholesale the way they do it is although for acros when they have one at the bottom they do sometimes augment by putting I think mp10s on the other side so this flow is extremely strong there uh, plus they probably have multiple overflows and whatnot I don't so what I am doing here is I'm trying to reverse the flow and I want to document this because as you can see I've actually done something else so right now um, I have uh, 10 platforms each platform hosts 10 by 10 so around 100 frags so it's pretty easy you can already see that I have let's say almost 1,000 frags in this system and um, I have this legs so the legs themselves are snap-ins that go from the bottom 
and I can easily replace them so I make those legs myself uh, and they are five inches long now that's how I was, run I was running when I needed to maximize the, f maximize the flow underneath but now uh, that I'm running from the top I'm actually running the pumps at about 70 80 percent and I want to crank it up all the way to 100 once in a while but for that for me not to have any splashing I need to bring the mp40s even a little bit lower and so what I've been experimenting with is changing the legs from 5 inch to this is this platform here is 4 inch and then the third one is 3 inch and while the 3 inch is probably the easiest um, to, to have uh, and you can see I'm just I was just a little bit worried about the fish because clearly the fish are just about three inches or two and a half inches tall and while five inches gives them a lot of space uh, four inches gives them just enough space to kind of be underneath when it comes to three inches because it's three inches to the top of the frag um, at crate uh, that means that there's probably three and um, what is it three and three quarters sorry two and three quarters inch of an actual free space and that might not be enough so that's kind of what I'm thinking about right now I still see that fish would go underneath I don't need them to be grazing uh, under it so you, know, you see so they kind of go almost a little bit lateral here so that doesn't give me just enough. Oh, the uh, purple tank and yellow tank are kind of going at each other. Maybe I'll have to catch one of them and move them into another tank at some point. So, but I digress. Moving over, so I'm trying to pick between the 3 inch and 4 inch height. Because the 3 inch, if I'm running it this way, then I can really crank up the flow. And I think the fish can still hide at night and whatnot, but they'll probably be a little bit more incentivized to graze from the top as well. So that's the thought process. Um, I might uh, do more work uh, this week, but if you think, or if you have an opinion on that, or if you think uh, there's a better way to maximize the flow, please uh, write in the comments below um, because like I said, I'm learning here and I'd like to make sure that the uh, frag system is has as good of a flow as possible. Uh, another little tidbit, I used to have a different flow here where I actually had a, an MP40 right over here and then I had a gyre process where basically the MP40 was going straight. Then I had one more MP40 at the corner of that tank sending the flow across. Then I had one more MP40 sending it over here. And then I was actually with three MP40s, I was getting a beautiful, beautiful gyre. However, um, while the flow was excellent, the there was no flow in the middle of the tank at all because it's 36 inches um, you know on the sides um, that just gave me almost no movement in the middle of the aquarium so i was getting dead spots for my coral so that's that's the challenge like i said please uh, share your thoughts and you know it's not that hard for me to change things up because with the legs I can I have enough to try different combinations you know the four inch does look pretty standard and it seems to be enough but I noticed that for example worldwide corals does not use four inch now I've also noticed one more thing uh, that worldwide corals when it comes to softies uh, they actually sometimes do use this low uh, location for mp40s because what I think you then get is a stronger like a wider flow so then um, for softies maybe that's a little bit better but I'm actually not convinced that that is the case so let's take a quick look from the top I haven't turned off the water flow and here is for example the 
two anemones. Uh, one of them I've moved earlier today over here. And what else? I did change. Uh, so thanks a lot for all of your comments from my previous video. Uh, thank you to Abe uh, for <laughs> still <laughs> talking about the phosphates and nitrates. And I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but maybe I'm now thinking maybe I've been running. I've been doing it all wrong for the last 10 years where maybe I crank up the lighting a little bit too much. So and that is really what's causing sometimes either the bleaching or dinos or whatnot. So I'm actually I brought down the lighting uh, somewhat and I am not changing my the rest of my husbandry or feeding and whatnot. So I'll actually keep an eye on what happens with the tank and how good the corals will look. But so far everybody else is looking pretty pretty good. So and I do like this powder brown a lot. So that is the state of my frag system for the beginning of actually what is it, the middle of April of 2022. And lots more fragging to be done, a lot more cleaning. You see I've, I've I've actually been moving things around so there's actually that's why there's quite a few frags on the ground yeah I think I need to do something about this uh, yellow tang and purple tang they are really going at it so maybe that would be uh, another project so let me know what you think all right I think uh, this is gonna show you how easy it is to change the legs on a frag rack. So I've got a few colonies here. I have this new 3.5 inch frag legs because these guys are five inch. I'm gonna just show you how to lower it. So you can see I'm not losing any space here and I can just yank one piece out. Remember where I put it, so here that's leg number one. This is going to be leg number two. Just wiggle it a little bit. It's been stuck here for quite some time. Yep, yeah, this one is out. A shorter, shorter one shows up and adds here. I gotta remember where I took it from, which is this area here. It's stuck and now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So first, this guy here, that's number three. Put it in, done. And finally, let's do number four, right over here. Sweet, and you can see, we are done. So these are the new legs. It's holding quite nicely. Let's take another look over here. Sweet. And I'm going to put it back into the tank. Focusing on a few updates. First of all, uh, before we're gonna talk frag legs, I just wanna show you the state of the bristle tooth and this guy so I've added it to the tank but uh, I don't think he was doing very well because I found him in the corner in about 30 minutes and I had to just yank him out of the corner of the aquarium easily with a net and I put him in this acclimation chamber this is a beautiful fish clearly he's stressed I might put like a piece of PVC in there so he can actually hide in but uh, Probably gonna keep him here for some time. To I don't see any other fish uh, harassing it, but or going after him. But probably it's not a bad idea just to keep him here for a little bit. Now moving on to the frag legs, and this is actually pretty awesome. So I um, have quite a few different lengths of um, frag legs in the tank now. 
So you can see the one in the middle here, this is three inches. And as I said earlier in the video, this seems like a pretty good height, but some of the fish, they start to go a little bit on the sides to get underneath there. And the four inch right next to it, this is a little bit too high. I feel like I'm wasting a little bit of space. Obviously the 5 inch is even higher and I think I'm going away from that. So what I did was I built a 3.5 inch, so right in between, and this is this area here. And you can see the fish, it's actually, I'm going to call it, I guess, the uh, fish ready or tang ready system. Uh, you can see that they are, it's just ideal height. So you're not losing any space, everybody is vertical. Uh, fish want to hide underneath there, but this is the lowest you can go to the ground without compromising anything. So I am going to probably stick with, um, with this three and a half inch. And right next to it, this is the five inch right here. So now that I have a three and a half inch here, I'm going to experiment with the flow a little bit more maybe crank it up a little bit and go from there. Oh, and you can see I've actually, uh, I've made a mess with some of the corals. This is this beautiful uh, needle in a haystack that just got moved around. So I'm gonna have to move a few of those pieces over the tank. Well, uh, looky here, we've got something new. This is the new aquarium. Can you guess what it is? Who's packaging things for shipping so well? Look at that. Do not double stack. There is this awesome cones. So there's no stacking from the top. This is, looks huge. I think that's another box and another box. I, if I were to guess, one is a cabinet and this smaller unit is the actual aquarium. And that is my next big project. This is what I will be working on next. So this is an awesome new setup by Waterbox. This is their latest line. Um, I believe it's called Infinia. And this is the second smallest. So I didn't go for the smallest. I went for one up unit and I'll do a lot more talking about it. But I uh, just want to show you what it looks like when you just ship it. So everything came in uh, on the pallets, was dropped off in the garage. I will open it up uh, fairly shortly and we'll take a look. Look at this, so there's very, very good packaging. I'm not concerned at all about the contents. And this is going to be something awesome. This is uh, a different type of aquarium. I have lots of awesome plans for it. This is uh, definitely where my new fish is going to go, the white tail bristle tooth. And Maybe this is where I'm going to take either the yellow tank or the purple tank uh, because as you've seen um, in the frag tank, they are fighting. So pretty awesome, very exciting and can't wait to unpack it and start playing with, uh, with the system. So if you ever wondered what goes into the cost of an aquarium, one thing you have to consider is packaging. Look at this. So both units, you've got um, some sort of a pretty, uh, pretty dense material, um, MDF of some sort, and then you have all the screws. So this way, if there's any banging, anything, this will um, protect it. And so what we have we got here? We've got the Waterbox Reef Ready Aquarium Infinia 165.4 gallons. Now that clearly is 
uh, full water volume, so the aquarium itself is going to be less. And then this is the cabinet, so I called it. Um, so now it's time to unscrew this and open it up. Underneath the cover box, there is yet another box. So the tank itself is right over here. Let's take a quick look. Nice. A look at that beauty. Nice little overflow. It looks kind of the same as the previous one. Um, I don't notice anything strikingly different about this aquarium than the one that I have yet. Now, this is the cabinet. And with the cabinet, same thing. Let's take another look. We have got another level of cupboard around it. And then there is a sump underneath. There is this new thing, which I think uh, is the uh, compartment for all the electronics. This is what I had to build myself in my current generation water box. But this guy has it all built in. And this is just the insides, look at that. Very nice, brushed aluminum. Hmm. I think that looks pretty awesome. All right, let's uh, take a look at what's inside. So the aquarium itself, we've got a box. I assume this is all the plumbing. Uh, the tank itself, this is a little bit thinner than three quarters, which is exactly what I wanted. I think it's going to be a lot more manageable to move around um, and to transport because my previous tank was super, super hard to move. And then this is the stand. I'm really glad I went with the, the black finish. I've never had that before. I think the second option, so this actually looks a lot darker on camera than it is in person. I think it's just my camera does the adjustment in white, sorry, in the exposure. But the cool thing is on the inside, you can see it's actually aluminum. And I think the second version of the stand does have this brushed aluminum from the outside with just a little bit of a black trim. And I don't know, I've never had a black uh, stand before, so I figured I would do something different. Now this is definitely uh, nicely done. Everything is fairly seamless. I think the uh, this will have to be adjusted once it's in position, um, but that's not a big deal. Now let's open it up. Actually first, I really am curious about this section on the right. So this is the panel for all the equipment. This is super nice. You can see um, kind of mounting things on the wall, uh, running some cabling. So this is, this is a great little space that you have an entry for all the cords and then Everything here it would be nice and safe from the harsh environment. Now let's take a look on the inside. Ooh, so let's look from the top first. So we've got quite a lot of stuff here. So this is the sump. So the sump is coming with the box that tells me. Uh, actually, we'll get to this in one second. I'm gonna open up the doors. And let's take a look at what's going on on the inside. Nice. So, stand is all made out of aluminum, so no more uh, plywood, um, which this is what I have in my previous tank. And the sump is huge. I think this sump is bigger on a smaller tank than what I had, uh, or what I have in my other aquarium. Another really awesome, well. I gotta understand this a little bit better, but look at this, the section for the return, it's actually very, very long. I wonder what's the rationale for that, but I can definitely see putting some media in there. Then you got the two filter socks. Oops. Um, then we've got 
chamber one, chamber two, and then the return, and this is the area for auto top off. And let's take a look at what we've got coming with the tank. You've got the filter sock. You've got some sort of a, I guess, uh, kind of a foam thing for bacteria and whatnot. You have the manual. I think the manual covers different um, aquariums, so from small to large. And actually, sure you can see here, so the brushed aluminum and black. So this is the brushed aluminum. Probably that's what it would look like on the outside. I don't know. I uh, I still am thinking black is the way to go this time around. You've got a second filter sock right here. You've got some inlets or whatever those are. So this is lock line, some pretty cool stuff. And then we have some filter sock silencer. Nice. So we've got those. This is the little connectors for, oops, for the doors. And I think this is the cover, which I'm not gonna open yet. Now, how do I take, for me to transport this, I have to take the center column out. And the only way I can see myself doing it is on the inside. Let's see if I can show that. You've got that little screw. That's the only explanation. So now the screw doesn't look like it's the standard hex. So, and I don't know if I have a tool like that. So my next step would be to try and open up this box, because if this comes as a package, maybe uh, that's where I would find the, uh, whatever contraption I need to open up and remove that center column. Or maybe I'm, can just use the standard hex. Let's find out. This is the contents of the box. As I have expected, it's all about the plumbing. So you've got the return hose, which is nice and wide. And you've got the, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the return pump connector, which is nice and wide. You've got the overflow. You've got the uh, check valve. And this is a very nice Spears looking gate valve right here, which is nice. Bulkheads with uh, lots of uh, O-rings, some more, some more clamps, that's probably for the hoses. I don't know if I see anything else yet, but... I don't see a connector, sorry, I don't see the um, the way to, oops, to open up the center column. So I'm going to just try a standard hex then. So a few updates. Um, it actually is torque and the model number is T30. So this is the type of torque that you need in order to unscrew and remove the top part of the center column. However, I did hit a snag. So let's take a look right here where I was able to remove the top one, but the bottom one you cannot do anything about because there's actually some padding right here that covers the other hole. And even when I lifted the sump, which was not that easy, but I lifted it. Um, I cannot get to that hole without starting to unpeel the the padding here, which I don't want to do yet. So I think that the this is designed to be almost like a single piece, at least in this model. Um, and for me to remove it, like you're supposed to actually, I guess, move the whole stand with the sump in it uh, into the house, which 
I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do it yet. I'll try to reach out to Waterbox and see if um, they have any tips on this because obviously with well like the stand is going to be super light and I wasn't worried about moving that but uh, together with the sump in it it definitely gets to be a little bit more challenging but I guess uh, the thought process is that if you have a very heavy um, uh, aquarium and you're already moving that then you have the uh, power to move the cabinet as well at least that's the idea so um, I guess that's what I've learned so far uh, this is um, the beauty of this hobby there's always something well until uh, next time well uh, I was able to figure out how to get the sump out of the cabinet and I was able to bring it in however I do not recommend anyone doing this. This was actually pretty painful. I had to remove that top brace. Uh, I'm gonna just focus on it right here, which is gonna go back. Um, and then using three people, I was able to lift the sump vertically, which was a very tight fit. Um, you also have to Make sure there's no attachments over here, so you have to remove those. And when I was able to finally do it, um, the stand itself uh, turned out to be super, super light. So it was very easy. It was, it's a little bit awkward, but it's easy to move around. Now, once again, don't recommend doing it. Probably just whoever is bringing you the tank uh, into the house, ask those people to just so don't remove any padding out of the sump, but instead keep it all there and then move this as one heavy unit. That would be my recommendation. Now, initial reaction or um, uh, to the stand is it's definitely, it's, first of all, it's higher. It's actually 38 inches, uh, where else my water box um, white older generation one is 36 inches. So definitely a little bit on the higher side of things um, also i really love this finish like this looks phenomenal in uh, real life the overall quality is nice um, so can't wait to f figure out what the next steps are now speaking of the next steps this is probably where this is gonna go uh, but maybe not i i don't know yet so this is kind of one option that I'm playing with. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time planning it. Uh, right now this is super easy to move around and I can move it anywhere I want, but this is it. This is the next step uh, in the new aquarium build. Well, this was quite a big one. Um, as you can see, I've done quite a few different things. Uh, there's new frag legs, uh, and I think it's pretty optimal. But more importantly, the new aquarium. Uh, let me know uh, what I should do different about uh, this uh, new water box. Um, uh, this one is not going anywhere. I still love this aquarium and um, everything that it stands for. But the um, other aquarium, I have quite a few ideas. Obviously, the clown tank and the uh, white tail bristle tooth both are going to go there. Um, I'm thinking of maybe moving my blue throat trigger from the frag system onto it as well. But should I um, e experiment with some um, new aquascape? Should I maybe do a few angels? Um, my dream has always been an emperor angel, but I think this might be a little bit uh, too small of an aquarium for that. Um, but this is the fun um, part, the planning. This is probably one of the best uh, parts of um, keeping an aquarium. So, um, you know, there is a reason why after three and a half years of uh, having this aquarium, um, I have some hankering for some new one. So let me know what you think and um, write in the comments below as well as uh, I can maybe answer a few more of your questions. Uh, see you uh, next Sunday as always.